the honorable leader of the new Democratic Party. <laughs> Often when members of the opposition ask the Premier about uh, things that are challenging for us in Nova Scotia, the Premier responds with um, a recitation of uh, things like the provincial credit rating and uh, population levels and youth retention as, as though this were somehow uh, establishing the government's um, unprecedented record. But these are, Mr. Speaker, half stories. Take the credit rating. Uh, bond ratings are only meaningful uh, when they account for fundamentals. Some fundamentals about our situation in Nova Scotia. We have got the highest percentage of people with low income of any province. And we've got the highest uh, number of people, percentage of people uh, with uh, credit delinquencies. Uh, and so I, I want to ask the Premier, wouldn't he be better off to acknowledge frankly where we are in Nova Scotia than to try to paint an economic picture Sure that is incompletely true. The Honourable Premier. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I want to tell the Honourable Member I appreciate his questions. He would know uh, 2013 Nova Scotians gave us the privilege to be the government. Uh, we inherited a half a billion dollar hole, Mr. Speaker, that it uh, cost to manage and that was going up, Mr. Speaker. Our inability to continue to invest in programs that Nova Scotians relied on, Mr. Speaker, is it was affected by that. What we did in the period of time, Mr. Speaker, has put us back to the fiscal health that is allowing us to make the largest tax cut. We directed it towards low-income Nova Scotians, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we've created a graduate opportunities program, which is attaching, attaching more young people to the workforce in this province, Mr. Speaker. More people are working in Nova Scotia now, Mr. Speaker, than they ever have before. Mr. Speaker, we're continuing to see the population grow. And we're going to continue, Mr. Speaker, to put ourselves on a good fiscal position so that we continue to make strategic investments to improve the lives of Nova Scotians. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Well, the litany continues. Often this litany contains uh, an element uh, about the province's current population level. Uh, but this is a case in point. Population levels of themselves don't really mean very much. In fact, our greatest increase in Nova Scotia population ever outside of the baby boom was during the Great Depression, and that wasn't because our fundamentals were sound. The truth at the moment is that RBC is predicting for Nova Scotia in 1819 to have the second slowest provincial GDP growth in the country. Wouldn't the Premier be better off to square up to the hard facts of our situation than to respond with difficult to difficult questions with evasions and deflections? The Honourable Premier. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Honourable Member for the question. Again, I want to tell him, Mr. Speaker, uh, that every economic measure, Mr. Speaker, this province is moving in the right direction. Mr. Speaker, we've seen it and heard it, Mr. Speaker, at every bank, Mr. Speaker, at the federal level when it came to the Audits Committee, Mr. Speaker, we're the only one of the only two Canadian provinces on a sustainable path, Mr. Speaker. He is absolutely right. Our population is at an all-time high. The stats were today. Almost 960,000 people are living in this province today, a new high. <laughs> But it's also important, Mr. Speaker, more people are working in this province, too, Mr. Speaker, than ever before. That's a positive thing. What we're doing, Mr. Speaker, is continuing to grow the population, which is in turn growing the economic opportunities for all Nova Scotians. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Just let us record this word for word precisely. Every economic indicator in Nova Scotia is going in the right direction. So let's just register this one economic indicator. Youth unemployment rate. Is it 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th of provinces in Canada? It is today 10th of all the provinces of Canada at 16.4%. Wouldn't the public be better served if the Premier would speak squarely to the real situation of people's real lives? Honourable Premier. I, I, Mr. Speaker, I'm happy you raised the question, Mr. Speaker. When they were in power, youth unemployment was at 19%. Mr. Speaker, it is going in the right direction. Mr. Speaker, it's going down. Mr. Speaker. More young people are taxing the workforce, Mr. Speaker, than ever before. Mr. Speaker, I was at Volta last night. I can't tell you how optimistic young people are and how grateful they are that this government is in power.